So the idea was inspired by the birth of my twins who just turned one and my career in the humanitarian sector and specifically working out in the Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh while I was pregnant. Um, so the mission of Kushi Kanta is to create opportunities uh, for mothers who are struggling to provide for their children with dignity out in, in Cox's Bazaar um, in Bangladesh. Um, and it's basically one of the very poorest parts of, of what's a very poor country anyway. Um, but despite that, the local community there have, have welcomed nearly one million uh, Rohingya men, women and children who fled over the border from Myanmar to escape human rights atrocities. Um, and the humanitarian community are uh, primarily focusing on doing some amazing things to support the refugees. Um, but what I noticed um, is that the, the host community, the local people are also really struggling. Um, so like child malnutrition rates, for example, are quite similar between the, the Rohingya refugee children and the host community children. So when I'd be working in the camps, I would see the, the local mothers um, who'd be coming up to the food aid stations where we were handing out, you know, rice and, and oil and, and basic uh, food to provide you know families with things to eat and they would be saying you know well why can't we have any to feed our children um but the, the aid was only being provided to the refugees um and i've got a long-term uh, personal and professional connection to bangladesh um and yeah i basically really thought i'd love to do something to help these mothers um and i'd always kind of had a bit of an idea of um wanting you know using a social enterprise approach to to make something really sustainable in terms of income generation um but i didn't quite know how i was going to go about doing it effectively uh and then when my daughters were born um we were gifted this amazing collection of these traditional canter blankets that are made from uh repurposed saris um and i was a bit overwhelmed that i literally we were given like 30 of them um, and i didn't know what i was even for two babies i was like oh, that's quite a lot of blankets what are we going to do with them but i just found they were so useful for like everything basically on my daily to-do list as a mother um, and they washed really easily and they dry really quickly and are just sort of the most useful things ever. And everywhere we were going out and about with the girls, we would get so many compliments on them and they're really brightly colours and they've got this beautiful stitching on them. Um, and um, it was a friend of mine actually said, oh, Laura, why don't you try and sell these? Um, and so, yeah, basically I put everything together and that's kind of how the idea for Kushi Kanta was born. Um, so through my through Pimp My Cause, I've been connected to um, a really brilliant and uh, diverse group of people. Um, so I've had some support from a lady called Catherine, um, who's been helping me with um, sort of more the, the kind of strategy and like planning side of things and thinking about, you know, especially with really limited time and energy to work on this. I want to um, do like use my time as efficiently and effectively as possible. So she's been really helpful in terms of thinking through and explaining what all these kind of, um, you know, marketing terms and process and stuff mean and like putting it all together and being like, this is kind of a logical sort of sequence of what you need to do when. Um, and then a lady who's also called Laura um, has been helping me to create a brand framework. Um, so thinking about like the vision and the mission and the values and how that all kind of translates into the way that you communicate your story. Um, and then a guy called Chris um, has also been fantastic in terms of uh, bouncing back and forth um, different ideas about kind of the, the target, you know, the customer profile and, and various other kinds of things. And has maybe um, taken a little bit more of like a tough take on things, you know, kind of challenging me and like pushing my thinking and taking me out of my comfort zone a bit, which has been um, really brilliant. Because obviously that's one of the things when you start something up like this, friends and family are all like, yeah, it's amazing. Obviously we buy them, you know, it's such a brilliant idea. It's good to have someone to say, hang on a second, you know what about this and what about this and this doesn't come through quite clearly so that's been that's been really good um but then the number one person who's um been absolutely brilliant and and put so much work and and skill and talent into this is a guy called steve um who's created the visual identity for cushy Kanta. um so yeah we we um kind of connected initially he's also um a dad of twins so amazingly i don't know how he's had time to do all this on top of his job and and he's launching his own agency um and yeah his his boys are like a few weeks older than than my twin girls um so it's been lovely to have that in common um and you know having funny calls at funny times and you know like how he kind of really gets juggling everything um so yeah we had a brilliant initial chat and i sort of shared where i was at and what i was hoping for and then bounced um some ideas and and sort of shared some um kind of inspirational material um and he just like picked it up and run with it and um i think really got the the vision for what i was trying to do but also kind of add you know took what i was trying to do and, and added value um 
and yeah everything around kind of the colors and sort of the feel of, of Bangladesh and, and the story and everything he um, managed to translate it and and the the um, the, the embroidery you know kind of the stitching tradition and everything he's he's managed to translate it into a logo um, and a color palette and um, brand fonts um, and then all sorts of other visuals that I can use further down the line in terms of how I would um, take the, the colour palette and the logo um, and you know kind of play around with it like in different ways and, and how it would look slightly different on the website versus on Instagram and and Facebook and what the packaging might look like and basically this this whole package of things um, which I think normally I understand I'd have to pay like thousands of pounds for it I'm definitely not in a position to do at the moment um, and yeah it's, it's been absolutely uh, amazing. Um, so ideally, I'm hoping to, it's all going to take a little bit longer than, than anticipated, obviously, because of the, the global situation. Um, so I'm trying not to put too much of a concrete time frame on things, but I'm ideally hoping to em employ at least 300 women and be able to provide them with a, a sustainable income um, so that they're able to earn enough money to provide for their, their children with dignity. Um, and also be able to do it in a way the blankets are all um, hand stitched, totally hand stitched. So it's something that they can do from home um, so they can do it alongside, you know, the household tasks and caring for children and, and also what's in a, a socially acceptable way. Because um, there are all sorts of social dynamics going on in the community and in terms of, um, you know, what's kind of acceptable for women to do. And again, from my long term experience of of working in Bangladesh and um, other similar contexts, but particularly in Bangladesh over the past 10 years, I've seen so many examples of um, outsiders, you know, Westerners coming in and, and trying to create a project and then it doesn't end up being sustainable. And sometimes it can be, you know, you're, you're trying to empower women, but actually you're coming into a community that you don't really know very well and you don't kind of understand some of the dynamics and, and you end up doing more harm than good, which is something I'm, I'm really wary of. Um, Ideally, I'd love to also ultimately involve the, the Rohingya refugee women um, and have it as, as something that's uh, building um, community cohesion between the two groups um, and then also have positive multiplier effects throughout the wider community. Um, and then I'm also thinking about ways that I can involve the, there's a uh, massive British Bangladeshi community in London. So thinking about um, ways that I can involve them and we're thinking about doing some workshops and things where people can come and, and make their own blankets. Um, so yeah, lots and lots of ideas. I'm just trying to take it one step at a time and not.